It is not an easy task to take measurements in space. You can't just create a long ruler to calculate distances when you're talking about objects that are millions and billions of kilometers apart. The complexity of measurements in space has caused many to wonder where the solar system ends. Well, it appears that the answer depends on what you define as the end. According to NASA, there are several criteria by which you can determine the end of the solar system. 1. If you base it on where the end of the planet is, you might say that the end of our system is at Neptune or the Kuiper Belt, the asteroid belt where the dwarf planet Pluto is. 2. If you think the solar system is composed of everything affected by the sun's gravity, you would say that it ends in the Oort cloud, which is a spherical cloud of debris that is a thousand times farther from the sun than Neptune. 3. Finally, you could say that the solar system ends where the sun's magnetic field ends. But why can't all scientists use one option to determine the end of the solar system? While it may seem easier to pick a distance and stick with it, the reality is a little more complicated. As our awareness of the universe expands and our technology becomes more advanced, we are learning more about the intricacies of our solar system. For example, scientists assumed that the end of our solar system was the Kuiper belt until astronomer Ian Oort suggested the existence of the Oort cloud. The existence of the Oort cloud may explain the origin of some comets, especially those that are not on the same surface as the rest of the solar system. This is because the Oort cloud is spherical and surrounds the solar system from all sides, while most other objects in the solar system exist roughly on the same plane. This discovery has expanded the known solar system, and discoveries may further alter our definition. Most scientists define the end of the solar system as the end of the heliosphere, which is created by the solar wind and the sun's magnetic field that forms a bubble around the solar system. The edge of the heliosphere is known as the heliopause. According to NASA, the particle flux in the heliosphere travels about three times the distance to Pluto. Only two man-made objects have crossed the heliopause, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Both probes were launched in 1977 to study our solar system and beyond. Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause on August 25, 2012, and Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause on November 5, 2018. While scientists consider the heliosphere to be a more consistent measuring point for the end of the solar system, data from the two probes show that they left the heliosphere at different distances from the sun. This may indicate that the heliosphere is constantly changing in size. The truth is that trying to determine the end of the solar system is a difficult task, and the more we learn, the more difficult it becomes.